So I'm a farm boy from the great southern of Western Australia. And why is that important? Because growing up on a farm was a, was a wonderful place to grow up. My parents uh, didn't have much uh, in the way of means or income. It was a relatively small farm, but uh, what a wonderful place to grow up on. Uh, as a 10-year-old, I swore I would never, I never wanted to farm. I thought Dad was the best farmer, Mum and Dad were the best farmers in the world. And, and through combinations of drought and poor commodity prices and things like that, uh, life was a, a battle for them. Uh, five or six or seven years ago, my wife and I bought a farm and, uh, and uh, I'm now very positive about the outlook for farming. <laughs> Far more positive than I was as a 10-year-old. Uh, in 1978, I went, uh, uh, after I finished high school, went to the US as an exchange student and that was a really important time in my life. Uh, my first host family were dairy farmers and uh, I have lots of relatives in West Australia who are dairy farmers, but uh, this, these people put another um, insight into dairy farming for me. They, they were dairy farmers in upstate New York in the US, so the, the cattle when I got there in January were inside, but they, they pasteurised and bottled their own milk. They had restaurants, they had retail outlets, they were a completely vertically integrated um, operation. And, and 78 took me um, from, from boarding school farm boy in Perth to free enterprise capitalist North America. And, uh, and I think that was a pretty important time. Uh, so you're right, I was at Chipmakers for around 11 years, so unlike a lot of your MBA students who will have um, many employ, uh, employers, I've only had two in my career. Although I had, at my, in my 11 years at Chipmakers, about 10 jobs. In fact, someone said to me towards the end of my time there, they'll find something you can do one day. Um, which was nice of him. So I, I joined West Farmers in 93, as you said, and, and that was uh, a luxury because it was a career and a lifestyle decision. It took us from Sydney back to Perth. We just had our third child. We had no family support in Sydney, so it was nice to go home. And, it was, and I was thrilled to join West Farmers. And the reason I was thrilled to join West Farmers was even then, in my mind, this company had a really good reputation. It was diversified. It had um, a highly regarded CEO, although he was relatively new, uh, Michael Chaney, who was appointed to CEO in 92, but his predecessor, Trevor Eastwood, was uh, highly regarded. It was a diversified business, and that fascinated me. Um, and my background, having grown up in a farm, you know, that's where West Farmers came from. So I, I was really thrilled to, to join West Farmers. Back then in 93, our turnover at West Farmers was $1.7 billion. We, we made a profit of $74 million. We had a market cap of $1.2 billion and about 10,000 employees. And businesses across <coughs> agriculture, we had a shareholding, but we didn't own 100% of Bunnings. We, in fact, did have a retail business called Charlie Carter's, which we sold to Coles. Um, we had dairy, uh, transport, insurance, building and forest products mining and, 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 and some chemicals and fertiliser. Um, so West Farmers today is a, is a conglomerate uh, with a financial focus and a heart, is how I would describe West Farmers, or a heart and soul, um, with four core values, integrity, openness, accountability and boldness, and I'll talk a little bit about that. Today our turnover is something like $66 billion uh, most analysts this year have us making a profit of over two and a half billion dollars. Our market cap's around fifty billion dollars, and we've got more than two hundred and twenty thousand employees across Australia, New Zealand, Ireland, and the UK. And if you were smart enough, uh, like my parents were, to invest a thousand dollars back in nineteen eighty four when we listed, in fact, Dad wasn't that smart. Dad, uh, Dad had enough units in the old West Australian Farmers Cooperative to get a discount on his superphosphate. Um, but that $1,000, if you'd reinvested the dividends in, in shares, would now be worth about $320,000, $330,000, compared to about uh, $29,000 if you'd invest in the ASX over that time. So it's been, a, it's been a good thing for shareholders. I also would argue <coughs> passionately that West Farmers and indeed uh, most big businesses are good for Australia. In the last financial year, we paid um, $45.5 billion to our suppliers. We paid just under $7 billion to our landlords and service providers. We paid $8.5 billion to our employees. Uh, that wasn't all paid to me, Ross. Um, <laughs> we paid $1.5 billion to the government in taxes and royalties. Uh, we paid $300 million to our lenders. 
$2.1 billion to our shareholders in dividends, and we reinvested $1.5 billion, in fact, that's net, so more like $2 billion back into our businesses. And that all creates economic activity, particularly in Australia. If I reflect back on my time as CEO, the, the challenge was pretty simple. The challenge was taking over from a highly regarded CEO, Michael Cheney, who when he retired was on day 4,300 of his tenure, and I walked in on day one, and most people expected me to be as good or better than Michael. And I remember having this conversation with Gail Kelly uh, as we were both reflecting on the difficulty in taking over from someone uh, who's been highly regarded. Um, and the other thing about it is that there is a short-termism, uh, unfortunately, and I, under, I get it. Um, hands up those of you who, who are employed and check your superannuation more than once every two years. Uh, and Ross, you know that most of the people who've got superannuation monies that, that AFIC is controlling will look them up monthly. And people naturally, that and the media cycle, sorry, Eli, um, the media cycle and other things have bought a short-termism, I think US quarterly reporting and a number of other things, um, to the way business is conducted, in, not just in Australia, um, but around the world. And the market wants growth. The market has an insatiable appetite for, for growth. In fact, I was talking to Zaga and Alex before about the Melbourne Business School being highly regarded by its, by, against its international peers. The only problem with that is next time those rankings come out, they'll want you to be better. Um, and that definitely applies in business. So, so growth was the challenge, but you can't go and buy growth. Now, I, I read something the other day from an analyst or someone that said, um, West Farmers should be spending their money on a one to three billion dollar acquisition, as if I can go to Coles tomorrow and go down the acquisitions aisle <laughs> and pick up a one to three billion dollar company that's going to create value for our shareholders. It sort of doesn't happen that way. And, um, and, and one of the problems that, that new CEOs can have is finding growth for growth's sake rather than create value for shareholders. I was lucky. I've always had a board that's been patient. When I joined West Farmers, our board was made up of all of farmers. Today, I'm probably the only farmer on the board, but that culture of being patient, that culture of being long-term investors um, has, has carried on to the board now. And the other thing that's been important is, I talked about John Benison being the fourth CEO of West Farmers. Well, I'm the seventh in 102 years. Rob Scott will be the eighth. So the average tenure um, is well over 10 years of CEOs. And that, I think, gives you some comfort when you come into the role that at your first misstep, uh, and there will always be a misstep, that you're not going to get fired, um, unless there's a really bad one. Uh, I'd also been lucky enough to run the business development group in West Farmers and run a business, as Aga mentioned, and, and both of those were, were, were wonderful things. I was also smart enough when I took over as CEO to bring on board uh, a mentor, a person who's been close to me in my 12 and a half years as CEO. And, and one of the things Chris has said to me over time is, is be yourself. Uh, and also the microphone's always on, be careful what you say. Um, but I've had an opportunity with, with this person to speak to him at least fortnightly over that, that 12 and a half year period. And so when we've had challenging times, I've been able to reflect on those times with him and reflect on how I might do things better. <clears throat> One of the reflections uh, I want to talk about is the Coles acquisition and, and, and one of the reasons I think it happened. So I took over as CEO in 2005. In 2006, we had an opportunity to acquire a business. Oh, I'm not going to tell you what the business was because it's irrelevant. Um, but we didn't acquire this business. And the reason we didn't acquire this business, uh, at the end of the day, it was too expensive. But we were slow and cumbersome in moving to look at this opportunity. And I, in, in hindsight, I think if we'd moved faster, and if I'd been a better, stronger leader, we may have picked it up earlier before it became more expensive. I won't go into the detail. I was, as a leader, still in some ways acting as a peer with the people who now worked for me. So I was thinking, 
we would all walk lockstep together as we were looking at this acquisition and we'd be one sort of big happy family. And leadership's not always about that. Leadership sometimes is about, and I'm saying this mostly for the MBA students, um, uh, is about actually leading. And I reflected on that in 2006 and felt I hadn't done a very good job. So when the opportunity came in 2007 uh, to have a good look at Coles, we did and, and I led and we took some bold steps. The first bold step was I put pretty much our entire business development team to work on this one opportunity. So it's 20 to 30 people in West Farmers that we took off other things and we said, no, we want you focused on that. And we did a few other things. We, we were bold in the, in the group we brought together that, to put a bid to Coles, which was uh, two private equity groups, Macquarie, Archie Norman and West Farmers. We were bold when West Farmers went and spent close to $3 billion buying a stake in Coles. Uh, and, and I remember the conversation with the board at the time, uh, reflecting that if we didn't proceed, we may well lose some money on this investment in the hundreds of millions of dollars. Um, but it was pivotal, I think, in the acquisition of Coles. Um, we were, uh, by the way, I, uh, I, uh, we needed, we needed a, 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 a facility from a bank to buy those shares. And I didn't particularly want to go to the, one of the Australian banks, so we went to an, our international banking partner. And uh, these were the Covenant Light days, Zager, and uh, in banking. And uh, so I asked the Australian managing director one evening if if we could get a credit line of three billion dollars. And I got a text from him the next morning saying, "You've got it." So <laughs> uh, that was pretty cool. We were bold to go it alone. We made a decision in late June when the first ripples of the global financial crisis came along. To, to, to do the bid ourselves because our private equity partners weren't going to be able to come with us. Um, uh, but at the end of the day, that's been a good, a good thing for West Farmers, a good thing for our shareholders. I'd argue it's been a very good thing for Australia in terms of lower food prices and employment and the like. Um, but the acquisition 2007 was an amazing year and we did a number of things through that year but the most important things we did were after 2007. The most important things we did were getting the people on board. We were talking earlier about Ian McLeod, Archie Norman, John Dirk and Stuart Machen, getting people of that calibre into Australia to help us run Coles. And uh, we've subsequently did, did that with Guy Russo and other people into Kmart. And then the West, model, West Farmers model lets people get on with it. So I talked earlier about one, our values and accountability is a really key value in the West Farmers group. And, and we enable businesses to get on with things. In fact, Michael Cheney would argue and I would, I would argue the same thing that you know, he and I, one of the best things we've ever done is not to intervene too much into Bunnings. Bunnings has been the most remarkable story um, in Australia and it should be a case study of Melbourne Business School growth for the entire time since the first Bunnings warehouse opened in 1994, revenue growth and profit growth. Uh, and and you know, we're, we're really um, excited about the opportunity in the UK as well. Uh, and, and a lot of businesses would have strangled Bunnings. They would have said you're using too much capital, um, you've got too much inventory in your stores. Um, West Farmers, within reason, let the Bunnings team have its head and the shareholders have reaped the reward for that. It's not easy sometimes, um, but uh, I think that's one of the, the things we've done. We've made plenty of mistakes and I've made plenty of mistakes. Biggest mistake uh, you know, I think I've made is assuming sometimes that people know what I know. And so at the time of the global financial crisis in 2009, um, when the market was concerned about near-term debt repayments for West Farmers and the media was writing about us having too much debt, um, whereas it was actually the debt that needed to be re refinanced short term. I, th I stupidly thought that people in the group would, would know what I knew, that actually the balance sheet was fine, that the results were going well from the business. Um, and and I, I was communicating well upwards, but I wasn't communicating well to the group. And, and, and people do believe, Eli, what they read in the newspapers, uh, even though I might tell them they should only believe half of it. The trouble is you don't know which half to believe. Um, and, uh, and, and so that was certainly a mistake I made and, and, and one of the, again, one of the, the things I would draw from my time. Um, I'm going to finish up there other than, Kirsten, so we've got a bit of time for questions, other than to say this. Uh, in my time 
at West Farmers, I can honestly say, other than for a very short period of time, when I came back from doing the Advanced Management Program at Harvard, when everyone comes back unsettled, um, other than for a very short time then, every day I've woken up, I've looked forward to going to work. I love my job. I've always loved the jobs I've been in. And uh, I hope that, that Zaga, your students can say that in the careers that they choose, uh, because that makes work exciting. And, uh, and my time at West Farmers, which hasn't finished yet, and, uh, but, but when it does, I can say it's been the most exciting um, and, and wonderful place to be over those times. And I can truly say that pretty much every day I've looked forward to going to work, and, uh, and, and that would be my dream for my children. Thanks very much. I look forward to uh, taking some questions.